Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Today's proof of life, it's still December 22nd. It's a Thursday, 2022. You get two episodes in one day. Lucky you. So I'm back at it. Going to give you another little 30-minute consultation for free if you want to have your own personalized, tailored for your own circumstances. If you need help breaking into corporate or moving up through corporate, you let us know. Reach out to us on IG. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z. Also, Patreon, the Corporate Cowboys podcast. You can subscribe to any number of tiers, more than one if you want. And some of them actually give you the option to send questions, send prompts for podcast episodes. Alternatively, you can write to us. That's P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California 95741. Now, this comes from r slash career guidance. Really, the question is how to address a gap in work during an interview. You see, they're asking here, I'm sure this has been asked before, it says, right? And they, and they probably has, right? They could have gone through the r slash career guidance subreddit and used the search function and literally just type in the keywords gap in employment history or gap in work history and pull up any number of different uh, posts, I, I guess they're called, for the subreddit. But because they didn't, they chose to ask it again. They're saying, here it goes again. I quit my job earlier this year in January due to the increasingly toxic work environment and no promotion in the role after six years. I have an interview lined up next week. What's the best way to address the gap in employment? During this time, I've partially remodeled my house taken care of an elderly family member, decompressed after the said job, and also freelanced as a graphic designer. So, Reddit, what's the best way to package that up for a potential employer? (laughs) This might be one of those ones that are less than half an hour because it sounds like this person has packaged it up already on their own. What the fuck do they need me for? Really what they're asking for is interview advice. During the interview, if they ask why you were unemployed, given your context, given the facts that you've provided in the body of of this post, I'd venture to guess that you did okay for yourself, even while caring for an ailing family member. I mean, that's not to say that an interviewer is just going to overlook overlook six months of unemployment, half a year of unemployment. But if you can come back with an answer that pretty much says you had no need to work, right? You could use your sick family member as a reason for having been out of uh, having been out of corporate and because you freelance, you had added flexibility to care for them. But at the end of the day, you not having to work, I guess if you wanted to spin it in a way where as a professional, it wasn't necessary that you have, what's the term called? gainful employment. I guess that's a term I'm looking for where you weren't required to be uh, employed because of your life circumstances, because you didn't need to work or because your family member was sick. I don't think there's any more explanation you really need to add other than that. You were in a position in life where you no longer had to work. If a company really is railing 
on you not having worked for a six month period of time, you got to ask yourself what it is they expect from you. Uh, and if they can't, uh, if, if they give you no, what's the term called? No, no consideration for having cared for a family member while having worked also. I mean, you stayed busy. It wasn't like you went without work and then subsequently became homeless because of it. That might strike an interviewer as that might pose a red flag to an interviewer because it lets them know that you don't have a work ethic, that there is some instability in your life that they are then going to have to account for when hiring you. And more than likely they wouldn't hire you because you sound, it sounds like your position in life is unstable. If you went without if you went without work for a six month period and it wasn't justified, right? If you got let go from one day to the next and, and um, the field that you work in is highly technical, highly specialized to an extent that vacant positions are very few and far in between. And there's a, there's high competition for it. You know, that might, um, that that might strike the interviewer as being uh, more reasonable, right? But you have other justifications. You were still working. You didn't need to work a consistent schedule, right? So you were freelancing on the side and caring for family. So, I mean, family comes first at the end of the day. You have to look out for your personal interests. And if they are urgent, if they are emergent, if they're critical, it's not unreasonable to place them above having to work, above needing to work a consistent schedule. I mean, again, it's, it's not to say you weren't working. You just weren't on somebody else's payroll. You weren't, uh, you weren't salaried by somebody else. Somebody else didn't have, wasn't uh, claiming you as an employee. I mean, if you're freelancing, you're an independent contractor, right? So you could, you could charge what you want, your rate on your time. And who's to say you weren't making more as an independent contractor charging, uh, charging personalized rates, overworking a set amount salary, Yeah, I, I think you, you really don't need to spill your guts in a situation like this, but you definitely want to lead off with a with a strong position that you simply didn't need to work. The, the, the requirement, the necessity wasn't there. You had enough to take a little time off of work and focus on your personal life, which was what? Remodeling your house, getting your affairs in order, and caring for family as well, but you weren't unproductive either. You were freelancing. So I think packaging it the way you put it actually in the body, and it looks like this is going to be less than a 30 minute consult, packaging it the way you have it in the body, but it's in the form that you present it. It's 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 stylistic, I think. Everybody has their own style of how they would present it, and it, it's the form in which you would you would present it. Um, I'm, yeah, honestly, I I don't see any issue with how you packaged it. It's more of how much emphasis you would put on those key points that were intersecting that time in your life that you were not working for somebody else, that you were not an employee for somebody else, right? It's just how you present them. Don't, uh, you know, don't, what's the term I'm looking for? Don't unduly lean on that sick family member like a crutch, right? Because 
that would amount to an exaggeration. And if you had time to work, to be productive and to remodel your house, I mean, you want to be honest. But generally, you can lead off with the fact that you were not required to work. You had enough to take some time for yourself and work on yourself before re-entering the job market, before re-engaging with corporate. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it's how you present it professionally. And you can come away from it appearing to be a very valuable professional because this professional happened uh, to decide on their own will that they did not need to work. There is a sense of power in there. Obviously, your resume, your, your resume in its entirety should be like chef's kiss, like, uh, like A1 should be 100% top to bottom, right? So you should be well qualified, maybe not overly qualified. Even then, you could spin overly qualified to be adequately qualified. But how, again, how you present your resume and further how you interview for the position, it will dictate, will dictate whether or not they perceive you to be a professional or if they perceive you to be an amateur, somebody unstable, somebody who might leave six months from when they're hired, who might leave again, right? Now, if the issues with your sick family member are recurring, you know, that may require a little bit more consideration, a little, a little, a, a different treatment, because that is an issue you will have to bring up with your employer. Because if you start taking time out of the, um, if you start taking time out from your employment and caring for your ailing family member at a time when you're necessarily applying and agreeing to the terms of your employment. If you have set PTO or set family leave, you might be able to use it, but it may not be available to you for some time, right? So again, taking that time off, requesting that time off, having those, I'm calling them issues, but they're not problems, right? But having those issues come up could be an re could be a reason could be a reason that you're not hired on the spot i mean you might still be considered but that depends on your reputation professionally on your experience and credentials on your cv on your resume and again your interview how well you can communicate your intention how well you can communicate your intent to return to work to return to corporate and why they should welcome you. Yeah, I'm going to cut it right there. If you have associates, coworkers, if you are in a position where you're trying to exit, you're trying to lateral, you're trying to barely initiate, enter the workforce, infiltrate corporate, there's a strategy. There always is. Reach out to us. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that you don't know what to do. If you have folks, you can speak one-to-one -one with. Our rates are reasonable. You can spitball ideas with us. We can come back with something tangible. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Talk to you later.